We'll start with the Mustard S82, size 8, uh, Nymphook. This is a, a really good uh, looking and simple stonefly nymph. So we'll put a bit of time thread on. Get rid of that. And what we need is a few fibres for the tail. I'll tie these in. Not a long tail on this, a longish tail. Tack those in there. Keep holding those up. And you can move them from side to side as you go along just to centralise them. Go back. That's good. That's perfect for us. Now we just go forward on these and cut all these off. Now we want two pieces of lead that we're going to attach one each side of the hook shank. This will not only weight the pattern but it will also give it the correct profile. So we just go down here, we tighten that up just there because that's long enough, that's all we need there. And we take one and the same on this side. Keep them on the sides of the hook. Oops, pull that down again. And cut that off again there. Then what we need is a drop of flat iron cement over the whole affair. And then what I do is, with the flat insides of pliers, I put them over the hook and just flatten everything down to get them on the sides, each side of the hook, like so. Flatten out the thread and then go over everything. This will give it the right flat body profile of a stonefly nymph. Good, that's that. Now we need another bunch of long fibred pheasant tail fibres. These must be long ones and we just tuck these in with the points like so. So the whole bunch is tight into the tail. We don't want any tying thread showing there. Then we can go up about halfway. So get all the fibres parallel. We don't want them crossing really here. And then rather like a pheasant tail body, we'll wrap the abdomen of the stonefly nymph. And we go up to about there. And we can come in with the tying thread and tie that off. Like so. it so you get that flat body then what we can do is we'll just turn that around and we'll trim off those like that good now we need another larger bunch of pheasant tail fibers now this is going to be the wing case pull that one out so we want the fibred side up so we turn it upside down and we don't tie these in with the tips we tie this in with the cut ends and we want that all the way across I'll just give that a spin up the uh, the thorax because we want this to go from thick or broad at this point and when we bend it over, it has to go thin. So that's good. That'll do us there. And again, we can go forward with this. Slacken off that bobby. And trim off these. 
good. Right up, we have to tie these in now right into where we finish the abdomen. We don't want any gaps there, that's it. Great, then we need a wee bit of dubbing, which we'll just uh, apply here. I want this just to go in tight into the abdomen to push the wing case back into it. We just start that there, wind up that, like so. Great, looking good. We've come far enough there. Then we need a little bunch of pheasant tail fibres like this. They're going to be the legs. So we need a bunch on this side. position there, that'll do me there, keep that in, then we need another bunch, this has to be taken from the other side of the feather, so the legs spray out the same on each side, a little bit too much there, move a couple of that, so we'll just put those in there. Shorten them a little. Good. That's us. And then we can go down here and we can remove those. Good. Now we need some more dubbing. up in front of the legs, a little bit more, just have a look at that wing case, how that's coming on, just straighten out those fibres, yeah we're doing good there, Got one of the legs in there that I don't want. Just lift that out. Great. Then we Two more need pheasant tail fibres. Which we just tack in on top of the hook shank like that. Just position those. That's will do us. There we go. Secure them. Remove that. A wee bit more dubbing. I want to try and make this head flat as well. We just go down into there like that. Good, then we'll pull the, I'll turn it that way so you can see. Now we want all these fibre, we don't want them crossing. So maybe I'll use that way. So we'll pull those over like so and we'll Tie that in. Good. 
good. Then we can clip off those. Like so. Lift up the antenna. Go underneath them. I'm going to take a whip finish tool. Remove the tying thread. So, and if you're using Dyneema, you just take a brown marker. Colour the head. Now a dubbing needle. Just to turn the antenna up. And then if you wish, you can uh, just pull out a bit of the dubbing underneath just to give it a bit more of a buggy feel. But it's the flat body effect you're looking for here. And that's it, the finished flat-bodied stone.